Well, the stressful part's over. That was the horse race earlier, so this should all be good, right? Welcome, everyone. If this is your first time here, it won't be your last. And for those of you that are here often, welcome back to an amazing venue and an even more remarkable group of people. My name is Heath Patrick. I'm a current U.S. Army Detachment Commander within 19 Special Forces Group. I'd like to thank you all for coming, for my lovely wife, Ashton, and all her support, for Pat and Andy Brown, for creating and nurturing the growth of this amazing organization, for three of the best mentors around, Jake Greenleaf, Brett Courtright, and Jay Williams. And finally, to all the other members of War Horses and you guys that make it the place that it is. War Horses is very near and dear to my heart for many reasons. I'd like to share with you how two firefights ultimately led me to this program. May of 2012, I arrived in Afghanistan for the first time as a fresh 23-year-old second lieutenant in the infantry who left his fiance back home to find adventure and glory in war. Shortly after arriving, my platoon and I set out on what became a routine three-day operation to eradicate any Taliban from our area. Day one started off nice and early, all of us tucked inside our big, loud, armored trucks, where we slowly began moving towards a village with the plans of removing bad guys, or at least pushing them further away from our little 50-yard by 50-yard compound that became our home for the next nine months. After an uneventful day of driving, walking, and driving again, we set up a security perimeter with our vehicles just outside a little village of about 50 people. For 25 of the 30 of us, this was our first deployment, and for the other five, they had never been to Afghanistan. So we were quite on edge all night long. Lots of waiting until just as the sun began to come up. Our little wagon circle started taking coordinated mortar and machine gun fire, Thankfully, these guys were about as good at war as John Wayne is at staying out of trouble in his movies. After an initial glance of where we were taking fire from, all our training kicked in and we began to fight back. I was coordinating each squad in the back corner of my vehicle so all personnel could see my directions. My heart was thumping like crazy and it seemed like we were going a thousand miles an hour. Then boom. A mortar hit right in front of me and one of my guys, and everything fell silent. To this day, I still don't know how neither of us were hit by shrapnel, because when I turned around, the entire side of our truck was charred and gashed from the explosion. Everyone was thankfully safe, but lots of nerves were shaken. Everyone hopes they will react with honor and courage during battle, but the truth is, you don't know until you are tested. It was a relief when my senior NCO told me that he was very confident in my leadership after that first real test. I tried to push all emotion to the back because we believe we have to be stoic and can't have feelings of our own for fear that our men, the men we are leading will start second guessing us. Fast forward six years and about 100 firefights later to the last firefight that I was in, this time leaving behind Ashton and our two week old son Everett. Still in Afghanistan, but this time with 7 Special Forces Group as a seasoned captain with multiple combat deployments around the globe. I was running a strike force targeting Taliban leaders and their headquarters elements. I would go on missions with 10 American Special Forces from my team and 30 Afghan partners. We flew on helicopters for three and a half hours from our home base deep into Taliban-held territory where we're not sure any Americans had ever been, toward a prison holding Afghan army personnel. As we began to come in for landing, we could see the enemy attempting to shoot us down and try to surround us. This was not the C team from years earlier. These were battle-hardened fighters. I immediately began calling in airstrikes to provide us some cover and remove some of the guns from shooting in our direction. We landed and quickly moved to the prison where we liberated it from the enemy for our use in the upcoming day, knowing that the fighting would become even more intense. The next 24 hours were very exhausting for us, fighting the enemy at distance from half a mile to within, to within hand grenade range or as close as 25 yards. We took one casualty, luckily just some shrapnel to a hand, but were able to eliminate the headquarters element we were after. From takeoff to returning back to base three days later, 
I don't know if my heart rate ever changed. It just beat at its normal thump, thump, thump. I did not show any emotion or really even think about how close some of us had came to not walking out of there. I had done what the military trains us to do, to become detached, desensitized to death, to be cold and calculating. And it wasn't until I first came here that I realized I had gotten very good at it. Everyone spoke of me as even killed, never worked up, never showing emotion, which is great for the military. However, not having any emotion was not so great for my family. The military is very proficient at preparing us for war by dehumanizing the enemy and desensitizing us from emotion, but not so great at helping us become human again. I would tell Ashton it was because if you had come as close to dying as many times as I had, that you knew what was important. But that was a lie that I was telling myself and I began to believe it. Unfortunately, my story isn't unique. Fortunately, the Lord led me to war, to war horses for veterans who recognized that and is doing something about it. It wasn't until the first time that I came through these gates that I realized I actually didn't know how to show emotion and thought I had lost that ability. Now that we have an idea of who this program is for, I wanna share with you why it is so special and the difference it makes, not just in our lives, but in those around us as well. When I first drove up, I was hesitant, as most are when doing something new and not knowing what to expect. I was hoping to rekindle a long hiatus from horses and see how I could find healing for myself and my family. I did all that and more. I was very physically broken and more mentally run down than I thought. That first group I attended showed me that it was not just okay, but important to others that I mentally reset so I could be a better leader for my family and for the men around me. I was the kind of person that had to constantly stay busy with something so I always had a task and never was with myself in my own mind. The moment I stepped in that round pen, I thought, I've got to focus absolutely all my energy into controlling this horse. The more I tried, the more frustrated I started becoming, and then Jake hollered over to me, telling me to just breathe, relax, and be present. Yeah, real simple, right? Uh, why didn't I think of that? Well, as you'd probably expect, I just thought, I am, and uh, it's not working here. Uh, until it did. I just let go of trying to control, and instead began to be present. I started noticing how the horse moved, how it was breathing, how its eyes looked at me and the rest of its surroundings. Then about all of two minutes later, I get told it's time to hop on bareback. Great, time to break a hip. Uh, good news was, the army already helped me break those, so not, not much could go bad there. Uh, so what's the worst that could happen? Well, I fell off. But instead of tensing me up more, it put me completely at ease, and I hopped back on and felt amazing the rest of the day riding around. It just took a reminder to breathe and be present in both instances. What I was hoping to find was some camaraderie with similar individuals and mostly some riding lessons. What I found was instant healing mentally and emotionally and a newfound confidence. Multiple combat deployments of being the guy whose decisions could potentially mean a teammate maimed or killed takes a hard toll on you. Attending this program with others who have felt that and tried to replay those decisions made has helped me realize that I am not alone in this and that we did make the right decisions. Now is the time to use the outcomes as experience and no longer dwell and think what if. This is where I gained a rejuvenated sense of self-confidence, which has strengthened my ability to lead my men. The next time I came, I was fortunate enough to be back as a mentor and additionally bring my own horse, a little four-year-old Mustang rounded up in Utah named Kwame. I am lucky that I get to use him for work on our family ranch and spend most days together. I can tell you that seeing him running up to greet me each morning is still one of the best feelings. No matter what I'm dealing with, it all melts away. I am blessed to get to use him to help teach my five-year-old son the importance of taking care of another living thing and the importance of confidence and leadership. I get to share with him why it is important to be honest with yourself, as horses can tell when you're bluffing. As I found out on that first day here, I get re and get reminded by my horse, their eyes can see into our souls and see who we truly are. 
They are great medicine for the mind, body, and soul. War Horse makes a difference in people like me that waited too long, in people that are still in the infancy of their careers, those at the end of their careers, and even those who left it a long time ago. There is healing and betterment for all of those groups. I have been privileged enough to share and see changes in many others, including my brother, an infantryman with four combat deployments, with other special operators, and with law enforcement and first responders. It is never too soon or too late to find help. And it is never selfish to help yourself because an empty cup cannot pour into others. The experience here makes a different impact for every person that attends. Some you will see a difference almost immediately. Others it takes until the last day, and some yet show no change when they leave, but a seed has been planted, and if willing to nurture that seed, those effects will come. What does the difference look like for me? It looks like someone who can share his thoughts and feelings to help himself and others find healing. It looks like someone who actually does know what is important in life and is able to put all focus towards that. But most importantly, it looks like a man who has a renewed sense of confidence in his ability to lead his family, his men, and his peers. I've worked with military and civilian organizations at all levels, and you would be hard pressed to find any that are as driven and successful as war horses. Because of the people here and their shared vision, every member is genuinely invested in each and everyone who comes here. The question always burning in their minds is how do we reach more and how do we make it better? They have found their reason why, to help us. As an SF guy, why is very important to me. Understanding that one little word can help solve so many problems. Whenever I come back to help mentor, I try to share with them some of my whys. It usually starts when someone asks me if I regret transitioning off active duty or if I miss it. And I can honestly answer no. Not one day has went by in the last three years that I regretted leaving active duty. Sure, I miss parts, mostly the people, but never do I think I made the wrong decision. Then I get to tell them why. I knew why I was leaving active duty. I was leaving for my amazing wife, who continues to put up with me playing army occasionally, and for my son, who I barely saw the first three years of his life. They were and continue to be my why. I then like to ask about a, why others came to War Horses. Was it to change? Was it to find healing? Was it to reset? Once that why is answered, we can create a plan. Having a reason will truly help you find what you are looking for versus just saying, I want to get better. If you remember why you started your journey for betterment, even in the hard times, you will continue on the right track. I was fortunate that the Lord opened the doors to help me find this place and put these incredible people in my path. From the first time I drove through these gates to competing in the War Horse Challenge in Las Vegas as part of the National Stock Horse Association, to speaking in front of this, in front of this fine crowd tonight, which you guys look amazing by the way, I continue to heal and grow every moment I spend with members of this organization. My wife for speaking here tonight was to hopefully convey to all of you in this room and to others why this place is so important to countless veterans, first responders, and their families. I will leave you all with a question for you to think about this evening. Why are you here tonight? What impact can you make for and in others? Thank you not only for myself, but also for my family, my soldiers, my friends, and others whose lives I can touch through the help and healing I found here at War Horses for Veterans. Thank you. Woo!